today I'm going to be showing you how I make my fermented veggies and this time I will be using a red cabbage and a regular cabbage and half of a very large onion. Let's go! First thing I'm going to do is chop off the cabbage pretty finely and then I will show you what I do after that. As you can see, I have now got all of my cabbage cut up. I tried to cut it up into nice little, somewhat small <laughs> pieces. So, um, yeah, you want to try to keep the size, you know, relatively similar. But yeah, can't escape having little chunks here and there sometimes. But anyway. So the next step after you got all your stuff together is you want to add some sea salt to help extract the liquids and all, all the juice from the cabbage. I like to add, for two medium sized heads of cabbage, I add about a tablespoon and then you want to start massaging your cabbage <laughs> to extract the juices and create that beautiful brine that you're going to use to ferment your cabbage and you want to Crush and massage your cabbage from anywhere, anywhere from like five to ten minutes. Already I'm seeing a lot of the juices coming out. You could see how shiny everything is getting. And that is exactly what you want to see. This is uh, quite fun and therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to do this right away because when I asked if you guys want to see me do a video on this I got quite quite a big response from all of you that you all want to see how it is I do this so I thought I'd better get it done for you guys <laughs> This is going to be so good. I'm making a huge batch because I'm going to give some away. It's always a lovely gift for friends and family. Give them some awesome top-notch probiotics. <laughs> Morning, knowing that you did it all by yourself and you don't have to pay like eight bucks for a jar of organic cabbage or no pardon me sauerkraut <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So guys, I have peeled some garlic that I'm going to be putting in with my cabbage. And now I'm just going to get the juice of a couple limes to add into each one of my fermented cabbage jars because I just really like the little bit of a tang it adds to the vegetables. You don't have to put it in. This is not a um, mandatory step. It's totally optional. Just getting some of that lovely lime juice. This thing comes with a cap, but for some reason I don't always use it. You have to have a pretty big lemon or lime to be able to use the cap. So. And just so that it's all evenly distrib distributed, I like to take my lime juice and just pour it in before I'm completely done with my cabbage massage. <laughs> and then just uh, at the very end, work that in also really well. Just for a couple minutes. It is ready to go into the jar. All right, so we are down to basically the last step. I have my jar here. You guys can use a mason jar. I like to use these wide mouth jars that I get from my leftover kimchi when I do buy it at the Asian store. And I've cut up some onions and I put those on the bottom. It adds a lot of really awesome flavor to the cabbage. And then I like to put a couple of heads of, a couple cloves of garlic and some organic black peppercorns. And then we're gonna start filling this up with our cabbage. And that lighting. I'm not happy about it, but oh well. <laughs> All right. Don't want to make a sloppy mess here. <laughs> and you're going to want to compact it down really tightly. Use your whole oh, fist. That's why the wide mouth jars are the best because you can really get your whole hand in there and really smush it down. You want to be sure that all of the air pockets are out of there. So just do it as tight as you can. Looking pretty beautiful, isn't it? Now I still have plenty of cabbage left for some more jars. And um, I will be doing that here after I'm done showing you guys how to do this one. But uh, I just wanted to show you which what what kind of water I use to add to the cabbage if there's um, not enough juice from when you massage the cabbage. So um, I will take two cups of very warm water at the very end. Spoon of my French gray sea salt or any kind of good salt that you want to use 
and you want it to dissolve because then you're going to add it to your sauerkraut. And this will last me for the rest of my jars. So I just like to make up enough. Alrighty guys, it is packed in there really well. And now it's time for the very last step. All right, so you can either use the a big top leaf from your cabbage to do this, or you can use a piece of parchment paper. It's gonna be kind of loud. And then you're going to want to use that to push it down. And then you're going to want to put a weight on top of it. Because the vegetables have to stay submerged in order to get fermented. And you don't want any bad bacteria getting a hold of them. So, where's my rock? I'll just put in my rock. And that won't let anything get to my veggies. Really press it down in there. Love these. And then you're just going to want to close your lid and put it in and put it somewhere in your kitchen. Not in, in a light place. You don't want the sun hitting it. So just somewhere in the shade in your kitchen where it won't bother anybody. And also you're gonna wanna burp it when you see little air bubbles coming up when it's starting to ferment. So uh, about once a day, come around to it and open the lid to let all the air bubbles come out and let it keep fermenting. You can leave it on your counter anywhere from one to four weeks, depending on how sour you like it. I like mine after about a week, week and a half, but um, it's totally up to you. And yeah, this is gonna be an amazing, gut healthy, good bacteria, friendly, probiotic sauerkraut. And um, I'll show you guys next time how I do other veggies and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and let me know how you like it when you try it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in my next video.